In this video, I'm gonna show you a very simple tool to help make sure that your architecture design and interior images are properly exposed. You've probably seen it already in Lightroom and Photoshop. It's the histogram. Now, the histogram can be a complicated thing to explain. And there's actually a good amount of videos already out on YouTube that do a deep dive and explaining how all the histogram works. But I'm gonna simplify the histogram as a reference tool just to make sure that your images are properly exposed. When viewing the image files in either Lightroom or Photoshop, you may notice this weird looking box in the corner of the screen. This is the histogram. It's a graph-like technical representation of how bright or dark the color tones are in the image that you're viewing. In many instances, it will look like a bell curve. Yeah, it's not a perfect curve. You're gonna see some spikes and valleys, but if you move your exposure slider left and right, you'll notice that one part of the curve tends to be higher than the others. This hump or peak is where you're gonna to wanna to pay attention. And in some instances where there's extreme contrast in one image, where there's something extremely bright and something extremely dark, you may see kind of the opposite of the bell curve. You may see a curve where there's actual peaks on the left and right side of the histogram. In those instances, you may have to adjust other aspects of the photo like highlights and shadows to basically adjust it so that peak does end up getting smushed to the middle. Now, in Lightroom, when attempting to adjust the exposure slider, you'll notice this lighter gray area in the middle. You can think of it like the sweet spot of where the peak of this curve should be. Now, if it's in the middle, technically, yes, it may be properly exposed according to Lightroom, but it may not always convey the accurate mood and feel of a space. For instance, in this image, the curve is in the middle of the histogram. Yeah, technically it's properly exposed, but I know when I was there, it was brighter than the way it looks in the photo. So I would like the photo to look brighter. Now. I may wanna bump up the exposure where this peak of the curve ends up being just right of center. Now, if I go too far with it though, that curve is gonna to start to get crammed all the way to the right of the histogram, and it's gonna look way overexposed. And in some instances, you may want that peak of the histogram to be slightly on the dark side, just slightly left of center. For instance, a building or space with a lot of dark tones. You take that shot, and if you do try to push that peak all the way to the center of the histogram, well then it may start to look weird. That may start to look overexposed. If a space is just naturally dark and moody or you shot it at night, yeah, you may want that peak of the histogram to be slightly on the left side. While the histogram is a fantastic tool to use as a reference, there is no one size fits all rule that applies to every single shot you're going to take. Again, it's something to reference. Your stylistic choices as a professional photographer should typically take priority. If you want to learn some other fundamental basics related to architecture and design photography, make sure to check out these other two videos. Feel free to follow me on Instagram at Matthew A. Photo. If you made it all the way here to the end, I sincerely appreciate you taking the time to watch and we'll see you on the next video.